Today I'm going to talk about the Toronto Raptors and why you shouldn't sleep on them when it comes to this season and their future with how good of a young core they really do have. This is a team right here who, as we know, won the championship in 2019 when going all in with Kawhi Leonard. They lost their star, lost a lot of their other key pieces, and all of a sudden were missing out on the playoffs two years later. But I was really impressed with how they've really been able to kind of turn it around and do a really quick kind of one year rebuild of this team. Team and get them to the point now where they're definitely in that play-in type of tier in the Eastern Conference right now. They've been anywhere from the 7 to 11 seed throughout this entire season battling for that play-in or playoff spot. And I really think that in their future, even next year, this could potentially be a team that's being back to a top five team in the Eastern Conference. I've definitely liked what I've seen from them so far this season. And today I'm going to be analyzing really just their core players and how well they've been playing so far this season and what the future entails for them. So let's start off by talking about Fred Van Vliet. This is a guy here who has really taken on that role of being the number one guy for the Raps so far this season. He is 100% play like an all-star and make and deserves to make the all-star team definitely this season. If he gets snubbed, I'm absolutely rioting. I mean, this man has definitely has the right to be an all-star this season. He's played amazing on both ends of the floor and has really kind of certified himself in the NBA in 2022 as the top 30 player in the NBA across the whole league. So, I actually did make a video a couple weeks ago explaining why I think Freddy should be an all-star. Be sure to check that one out as well. I went more in-depth there, so if you guys want to check that one out for a more in-depth analysis, feel free to do so. But just to summarize, I mean, Freddy's pretty much good at everything. He's a fantastic perimeter shooter. He's getting better at scoring at the rim, finishing strong around there. He's becoming a very good player in transition and really leading this Raptors offense, being a good playmaker, a good under sized rebounder and on the defensive side of the floor he's definitely underrated there as well I feel as though he's definitely a top 25 defender in the game right now a very good perimeter defender a great post defender for his size and has great hands he's always looking to get steals and deflections and run off of that so he does a fantastic job defensively as well and overall when we look at some stats so far from Fred this season they definitely show that he's absolutely an all-star in the east this season as he's averaging pretty much 22 points per game almost seven assists per game and doing this on 58% true shooting which is well above league average this season 41% from three and then defensively just some basic defensive stats here he is averaging 1.7 steals per game and, and four deflections per game which is number three in the entire NBA and these basic stats here don't really show how good of a defender Fred really is if you watch him play you'll see how good of a scrappy on ball and off ball defender he really is and a good interior defender for his size as well so Overall, he's really been that main guy for the Raptors this season, play like an all-star, and I honestly think that going into the future, Fred could continue to get better. I don't think he's hit his peak yet, and if the Raptors can, can hang on to him, he could definitely potentially be their franchise player for a little while longer. Now, another huge key to the Raptors' success this year has been Pascal Siakam. When he's been healthy on the court, he has also played like an all-star, and I feel like he's really going under the radar here because all the attention on the Raptors is going to Fred Van Vliet who's obviously playing like an all-star like I just talked about, but people don't even talk about how Pascal Siakam, I would honestly argue he deserves to make the all-star this t this season as well. He's really settled into his role well. He didn't have a good season last year, wasn't really clutch at all, and I think his confidence was really down for the bubble run that he had in the prior year in 2020 where he just played absolutely horribly, but this season he's come back as playing like almost the best of his career and has really settled them in it settled into the role of being the second option. He's a good interior scorer. He's got back to being a very crafty scorer in the post. Good rebounder, a very versatile on-ball and off-ball defender. He provides a lot for this team defensively, which really separates him, I think, from some of the other star power forwards in this league, like Julius Randle and DeMontis Sabonis, for example. That's what makes Pascal better than him, better than them, is really his defense. And then also this year, he's been a great playmaker. His best best playmaking season so far in his young NBA career and overall like I mentioned he just doesn't have really that pressure of being that first option anymore since Fred has kind of taken on that role the pressure has been taken off Pascal and he's really settling to his, settling into his offensive role nicely 
I really do think he should be an all-star alongside Fran Van Vliet. There are three front court positions for the all-star team of the reserves, and I think these belong to J Jason Tatum and Jimmy Butler, who pretty much everyone would agree with me there. And then the last spot would be between Jared Allen and Pascal, and I would honestly give a slight edge to Pascal. No disrespect to Jared Allen, he's had an amazing season playing his role with the Cavs as well, but I really think Pascal's been a little bit more productive. When we look at some stats so far this year, he is averaging just over 21 points per Per game eight and a half rebounds per game which has really been key for this Raptors team as well almost five assists per game which is a career high for him and then almost 48 percent from the field 34 and a half percent from three which compared to last season is a big upgrade for Pascal and this is above league average at the power forward position and then he's also like I mentioned doing a fantastic job on the defensive side of the floor as well going into the season my number one doubt for the Raptors team was they don't have the star power to compare compete in a strong Eastern Conference, but both Freddie and Pascal have really proved that they are all-star caliber players, they are a good core for this team even going into their future, and can really compete with some of the best duos in the NBA. The Raptors also have some of the most top tier role players in the NBA, like a guy like OG Ananobi, who has really broken out this season, especially offensively. He has really been an, kind of an elite 3 and D guy throughout the last two years of his career, and has still been that this year, but also really learned how to create his own shot off the dribble and play a bigger role in this team as kind of the third offensive option. Before this year, he was really more of a catch and shoot guy offensively, but this season, he's actually created his own shot on 42% of the baskets that he's scored. And while his efficiency has dropped, he's definitely becoming a more significant player on this team and overall is averaging 19.5 points per game so far this season for the Raptors and doing it on 35.6% from three, which still is above league average for this season, doing that on 7.5 attempts per game. He's also definitely improved his playmaking ability a lot this season. He does a good job of drawing attention in the paint having good gravity, kicking it out on the perimeter when he's driving, making the extra pass when he needs to. He's averaging a career high two and a half assists overall this season. Also averaging about five rebounds and it's still one of the best defenders in the league. He's one of the few guys in the league that can truly effectively defend one through five on the floor. Every position he can defend and overall this season he has a defended field goal percentage of 43.3% which is what he's holding opponents to when they're guarded by him and this is impressive too since a lot of the time he's defending the other team's best player so he's done a fantastic job this season on both ends as well and he will also continue to improve every year just like he has done throughout the first few years of his career so far another really good role player for the Raptors this season so far has been the rookie Scotty Barnes who right now is hitting a little bit of the rookie well, but let me tell you something. This kid is special. I mean, I made a video about a month ago about him potentially even being the Raptors franchise player down the road into the future in three or four years. That's just really how good I think he could be. He's been playing like the rookie of the year for pretty much the majority of the season. He's probably third in the race right now behind Cade Cunningham and Evan Mobley at this point, but he can still really do everything. And that's what I like about him. He's such an overall versatile player. He can score inside. He's got that little floater in the paint that he can use. He's a decent mid-range scorer. He hasn't been shooting the, th the three well recently, but we've seen that he he definitely can do it if he's on a bit of a hot streak. He is a bit of a streaky shooter, but if that shot's falling, he can definitely be lethal from three as well. And then defensively, another one of those guys, both pass all of Pascal, OG, and Scotty are all very versatile defenders, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on as well, But and that's what I like about this Raptors team, but Scotty overall has been a fantastic defender as well. He's taken on the challenge of sometimes guarding the other team's best player, whether they're a perimeter player or an interior player, Scotty can do it all. He's another versatile defender on this team. So I really like his overall game. And so far this season, he's averaging about 14 and a half points per game, eight rebounds per game, a fantastic re energetic rebounder as well. He's a good playmaking uh, point forward kind of. He's averaging three and a half assists. He has good court vision. He's great in transition and is overall almost shooting 48% from the field as well. Not to mention his incredible defense. So another great player here with tons of upside and could be a great future asset for the Raptors. 
And then lastly, we got to talk about Gary Trent Jr., who's also been a great role player for the Raptors this season on both ends of the floor. The shooting guard has really improved so far this season, showing his potential and also showing that he's going to improve as his career goes on and hasn't really hit his peak yet. I mean, that's something that we've really seen as a theme with really the whole Raptors starting five of the season when they're fully healthy, is all of these guys can really improve, and that's why I like so much about their future, is these guys are still young and still have a lot of potential. For Gary, on the offense, he does a fantastic job of creating his own shot off the dribble. 45% of his baskets so far this season are unassisted, and he's also a good catch-and-shoot guy on the perimeter, has really improved the efficiency and volume of his three-point shooting so far this year and provides some good spacing for the Raptors. And overall, when the shot clock's winding down, he can just go get you a bucket on his own as well. Overall, he's just a great scorer, and defensively, he's very he has very active hands. He ranks top five in the NBA in both steals and deflections and overall is a great off-ball and perimeter defender. Overall so far this season he's averaging over 16 points per game, shooting almost 37% from three on over seven attempts per game and then like I mentioned defensively is a great job of having active hands. He's fourth in the league in steals with almost two per game and fifth in the league in deflections with about 3.5 per game. Another player who's really played his role well and has a lot of potential. Now when we talk about the Raptors bench they don't really have a ton of talent and good depth off of the bench here but some of these guys do have a little bit of potential like precious achua he has some good defensive potential he's a good rebounder and he could be a definitely potentially a good piece for the raptors bench in the future ken burge same thing he can be a pretty good interior uh, presence for an undersized center and a good rebounder chris boucher can hopefully get back to the way he was playing last year which would be really helpful for this team as well he can be a good three point shooter rim protector even a guy like delano banton has potential in the future he's mostly been playing with the g league this year but he could definitely be a good backup point guard for them in the future as well now another thing here is that when if you were talking about like in the playoffs here depth isn't exactly that important in the regular season it's definitely important but let's say the raptors next year are in a playoff push i mean really all they need is about seven to eight guys to consistently go out there and give it their all i mean when they won their championship they pretty much did it with a seven-man rotation not to mention that if they do get into a playoff push next season or even this season i do trust the front office i trust them aside to go out and do something about this and go out and acquire some depth and play to what they need. So overall, I'm definitely feeling comfortable about not only this season for the Raptors, but their future and their starting five, especially the five guys that I've talked about are very doing very well and have a lot of upside as well and are really going to be their core that can potentially lead them to something even this year or maybe next year. Overall, as a team for the Raptors, I've been impressed with their ability to, on both ends of the floor, develop some chemistry with each other this season. When we talk about offense, so far this season, they have the 11th best offensive rating in the NBA. I did not expect this at all from this team, but they really do do a good job of getting out in transition often. That's really their first resort on offense. They're fourth in the NBA in transition points per game. All of the guys, especially if they're starting unit, do a great job of pushing the pace and try to get easy baskets in transition around the rim or from three they do a really good job in transition overall and then just as a set offense I mean we thought especially going into this season that their set offense was going to be kind of a weakness but Fred Van Vliet has really done a great job of running this offense overall and they have a versatile offense they have good shooters good uh, floor spacers off ball shooters like Gary Trent Jr. they have good interior scorers like Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes they, those guys can score in the post. They have a primary playmaker in Fred Van Vliet. They've got secondary playmakers like Pascal and Scotty Barnes. And some of the guys off the bench can come in and knock down some threes as well if they need and bring some energy. So overall, offensively, they're definitely looking good. Defense was what I thought would be the main strength for this team, but they haven't really been great. I mean, like I mentioned, their defense personnel is very good. They don't really have any under-average defenders on this team. And they're all very versatile and switchable, which really plays to their advantage some 
sometimes because really just everyone can switch everyone can guard everyone on the floor but overall they only have the 17th best defensive rating kind of middle of the pack but what I really think that's from too is they don't really have an interior presence the tallest guy on this team is Chris Boucher and both him presses Achua and Cam Birch are all kind of undersized centers that don't do a fantastic job of getting defensive rebounds and can sometimes just get bodied down there by bigger centers so Miles Turner has definitely been a, a guy that the Raptors have been looking after I don't want them to give up too much for him like an OG Ananobi but they should kind of do whatever it takes with picks for example to get him because he could be a definitely a very good interior presence and rim protector for them as well they should all also look at underrated guys like Robert Williams who I actually made my whole recent video about him and how underrated he is and just other guys that can do a decent job of defending the perimeter and be a big interior presence for them defensively if they can get that this team's going to be unstoppable on the defensive end of the floor as well rebounding has been really interesting this year because offensively the Raptors have very good offensive rebounding they're number one in the NBA in off offensive rebounds per game guys like Chris Boucher Scotty Barnes Precious Achua Pascal they do a great job of crashing that glass offensively but defensively they're actually dead last in defensive rebounds per game which is definitely really weird but I think it's mostly because of how they're so focused on actually getting a stop defensively that they can't uh, get that rebound at the end and also like I said they just don't have that size so their switchable defense works sometimes but if they really got a just one big man I think that would really benefit them as well and that's what they're really just one step away from is getting that guy to help them defensively a little bit overall the Raptors are definitely looking very strong as a team right there they're, right now they're exceeding expectations at the start of the year I predicted them to be the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference and I'm gonna stand by that prediction I think that'll prevail and they'll become the seventh seed this year are they gonna beat a team like the Brooklyn Nets in the first round this year probably not but like I mentioned the future of this team is definitely bright as well I could even see them as a top five team in the East next season and I'm very excited to see what the future holds for this gr uh, great group of young guys that are great on both ends of the floor thank you guys for watching today's video if you stuck around to the end you guys are the real ones for real this was a long video today but thank you guys for watching comment your thoughts down below on the Raptors and this season and their future and I'll see you all in the next video